basically what I'm going to be talking about today it are, uh, is about some management tools that cattlemen can use to boost uh, performance of their cattle on infected or uh, wild type endophyte infected tall fescue. This wild type that infects all the Kentucky 31. It's a toxic endophyte that produces ergot alkaloids that can really reduce uh, animal performance, be it growth weights of calves, reproductive efficiencies of cow-calf herds. Also, it, it has an adverse effect on their physiology. Uh, it, it, the uh, ergot alkaloids cause vasoconstriction uh, of the, of, and uh, reduces blood flows to their peripheral tissues where they can't regulate body heat. And so they're subjected to very severe heat stress during conditions like we've had here lately, very high air temperatures. And then they can suffer from uh, cold stress too during the winter time. And they, they uh, get a condition called fescue foot where uh, their, their hooves and their tails actually can, be, can become necrotic. Um, these managements, as I said, will improve cattle performance, but also these managements can, can actually uh, reduce the severity of the toxicosis. Um, first, I'd like to talk about uh, feeding some, some uh, co-product feeds, be it uh, soybean holes or dried distiller's grains. I've worked primarily with uh, soybean holes. Uh, as I say we could do this with concentrates, but uh, with, with corn, soybean concentrates, but those ingredients have gotten so expensive that it's really cost prohibitive for cattlemen now. So we're looking at more, the co-product feeds. Uh, they've gone up in price too, but, but they can still be purchased and used in a cost-effective manner in improving uh, cattle performance on tall fescue. Uh, I say feeding and not supplementation because um, we've been doing this with um, stocker steers, feeding uh, at a rate of five pounds per day above what you'd consider supplementation. Um, and we got to get we, we got to get a higher percentage of their diet in these co-product co feeds. Uh, so feeding at about five pounds per head per day, and this would equate to uh, seven to eight tenths percent uh, per body weight. Um, so um, by doing that, we've we've been able to improve average daily gains by as much as uh, uh, 25 to 30 percent. And with the soybean holes, we have found that um, these cattle tend to shed their hair coats. Fescue cattle exhibiting toxicosis, they don't shed their winter hair coats. Uh, they have very rough hair coats in the summertime. And we have found with this feeding management that we can actually uh, uh, have a higher percentage of cattle shedding. Um, they, they also have reduced rectal temperatures, body temperatures. Uh, there's a hormone, prolactin, that we use as a marker of toxicosis. It's consistently very low in cattle that are exhibiting toxicosis, and we found increases, twofold increases, in the prolactin levels of these steers where we fed them soybean hulls. Uh, we've also done the economics, and we've, we have found that over a fairly broad range of soybean hull costs, those outside the range of what they are right now, and over low to high cattle markets, it's still very cost effective to, uh, to do. Uh, Dr. Eric Van Zant here with the Animal and Food um, uh, Sciences Department here at the University of Kentucky. He's, he's starting some work with dried distiller's grains. His preliminary work is uh, showing very similar results to what we found with the soybean hull. So it looks to me like feeding these um, these Kobach product feeds can be used as a, as a tool to, in, to boost animal performance as well as mitigate the effects of the toxicosis.